Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode considers this question. How does archaeology relate with anthropology? The answer to this question can be complicated because of different ways of defining what archaeology and anthropology are in the first place. In many academic settings today, archaeology is considered to be part of a larger field of anthropology. This relationship is reasonable in some ways, but unreasonable in other ways, leading to a puzzling set of circumstances and implications that should be dispelled. As an archaeologist, I approach these issues by clarifying what archaeology is, and then exploring how archaeology relates with other disciplines, including anthropology, among those possibilities. Archaeology fundamentally involves the search for facts about the human past. Archaeologists examine objective material remains that have survived from human actions in the past. In this general definition of archaeology, the material remains from the human past could be obtained from any place where people ever lived and from any time period when human beings ever existed. Moreover, those material remains could include artifacts, food refuse, architectural ruins, rock art, or any aspects of the ancient landscapes where people had lived during any time period in the past. This scope of archaeology could support broad diversity of potential research questions about what people did in the past, how they related with each other and their environments, and how they changed or adapted their ways of life through time. In my work, I approach archaeology as an integrated field of natural and cultural history. The diverse research questions in archaeology could overlap with numerous other fields, such as geology or any of the environmental sciences, as well as sociology or any of the cultural or humanistic studies. Despite this overlap, though, archaeology is unique in obtaining real material facts of past human activities directly from those past contexts. Geologists, paleontologists, and environmental scientists can obtain factual data from ancient contexts, but they do not study past human activities. Of course, all of these professionals present their own data sets, and they find little or no reason to intrude into the evidence about the human past from archaeology. Meanwhile, archaeologists very often engage in cross-training or cross-collaborations in order to benefit from geology, botany, and other lines of evidence toward depicting ancient sites and landscapes more holistically. Most importantly, these studies are truly interdisciplinary, wherein archaeology is situated on equal footing with the other approaches. Several hybrid approaches are known as geoarchaeology, archaeobotany, archaeozoology, and other collaborations. Cultural and humanistic scholars base their studies on observations and interpretations of human behaviors during historically documented periods and during the present day, but they do not base their studies on the material remnants from ancient contexts. These historical and modern studies can generate many ideas about how people behave generally, how they relate with each other, and how they interact with their environments. These ideas potentially could be translated into hypotheses that could be tested through different lines of evidence, including the possibility of archaeology. At this point in the presentation, you may be wondering how anthropology relates in this general schematic. This issue can be complicated because of two different definitions of anthropology. First, the classical European version of anthropology involves the study of the physical human body. Second, a more liberal and modern version of anthropology refers to the study of humankind in the most general terms. 
the more general view of anthropology, had developed primarily in the United States some decades ago, and today this tradition has extended into most parts of the world. Currently, most academic programs designate anthropology as a general study of humankind that could involve a number of different approaches within it. One of those approaches, known as ethnography, involves the observation and recording of people and how they behave. When these ethnographic records are analyzed toward proposing general interpretations of human behaviors, then those interpretive results are known as ethnology. This scope of work sometimes is understood as cultural anthropology or social anthropology, but it equally could be understood as social history, sociology, or other names. During the late 1800s, some scholars viewed archaeology as a way to extend ethnography and ethnology into the distant past. Since the early 1900s, however, most archaeologists have recognized that they study the objective material remnants of past human behavior, while their counterparts in cultural or social anthropology study the subjective aspects of living cultural systems or societies. Conceivably, cultural or social anthropology could generate hypotheses that next could be tested through archaeology. Realistically, though, testable hypotheses about human behaviors could come from history, sociology, cultural geography, and many other fields independently from the ideas in cultural or social anthropology. Today, most practicing cultural or social anthropologists no longer work with the old-fashioned classical descriptive ethnographies or general ethnologies that have been most relevant for applications in archaeology since more than 100 years ago. Rather, the newer studies of the last several decades have focused on much different topics such as the roles of non-government organizations in distributing health care in rural communities. These topics are interesting and important for several reasons that simply do not overlap with archaeology. Modern anthropology and archaeology share very little with each other. Another aspect of anthropology involves the study of the physical human body, known as physical anthropology. Some of these studies can be applied to the ancient skeletal remains from archaeological sites, and by definition these studies occur within the scope of archaeology. Unfortunately, many of these studies have been performed by the physical anthropologist and DNA specialists without meaningful input from archaeology. One of the world's leading authorities in ancient DNA studies in his own book wrote about how he repeatedly has overturned his interpretations of the human past whenever he has found new evidence from archaeology. These repeated falsified conclusions reveal an obvious deficiency in the research methodology. In my reading, all of those false interpretations could have been avoided quite easily if only an informed archaeologist had been more involved in the studies. Part of the problem, as shown in this book, is the tendency by some of the world's leading researchers to regard archaeology as a technical procedure for supplying their laboratories with the sample materials for their analysis. In reality, Archaeology involves a set of interconnected techniques, methods, and theories. Moreover, archaeological research has produced a vast record of material findings from all around the world and throughout all time periods. Within this extensive material record, ancient skeletal remains and ancient DNA samples alone account for very little of the known scientific knowledge. By ignoring the reality of archaeology and its much larger knowledge base, of course the interpretations will be flawed. In my view, physical anthropology studies with ancient skeletal remains or ancient DNA can address profoundly important questions about the human past, but this potential cannot be achieved unless the studies are performed as part of archaeology. When the studies and especially the interpretations are separated from archaeology, 
then the results almost never have met the basic standards of scientific practice, as proven by the repeated examples of falsified conclusions. In this sense, archaeology cannot be part of physical anthropology. Rather, some aspects of physical anthropology should be acknowledged as parts of archaeology. Considering cultural or social anthropology, some of the theoretical frameworks and hypotheses could be applied in archaeology, but archaeology does not need to be part of anthropology. Rather, archaeology could address many diverse questions that are relevant for geography, ecology, sociology, and almost any field of study involving natural history or cultural history. In my view, archaeology can make significant contributions in knowledge with anthropology or without anthropology. Therefore, archaeology does not need to be part of anthropology. In concluding this episode, I hope that I have encouraged some new thoughts and discussions about how archaeology may or may not relate with anthropology. What are your ideas about the current and future relationships among archaeology, anthropology, and other disciplines? If you have not already subscribed to this channel, then please consider to do so. Of course, you are welcome to share with your friends and explore more online videos with the Archaeology Studio.